As human beings, it's quite impossible to be 100% unbiased. Ever since I started my reports on China show, I've had people accuse me of being unbalanced and only talking positively of China. That's actually completely true, and I'll tell you why. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到外媒看中国，我是安博伟然。Despite heralding itself as free, fair, and balanced, Western media has proven time and time again to be extremely biased against China. Despite that, detractors of my work continuously call me unbalanced and attack me for not reporting China bad stories in my reports. Today, I'll explain why I'm proudly biased in my reporting and why that's actually offering balance to the wider media landscape. This is Reports on China. I'm Andy Borham in Shanghai. Let's get reporting. We all know the terms media bias and fairness and balance, but what do they actually mean? And is there any room to move? Most people would understand fairness and balance in news media as quite specifically relating to each and every single report, whether that's a newspaper article, a radio interview, or a TV news segment. To put it simply, that usually means airing both sides of a debate within a said story. Let's say, for example, the government wants to build a highway through farmland, which requires two farms, four private homes, and a gas station to be demolished and relocated. Now, if a TV news reporter came to the scene and just interviewed a government official on site who explained the benefits of the road and how it will cut travel time by fifty percent and lead to higher productivity, that would be unbalanced. By the same token, if the news reporter only interviewed those being told they need to relocate and just put across the negatives of building the road, for example, that their family has run the farm for generations and that a flock of protected geese live on a lake on the property, that would also be an unbalanced news report. A fair and balanced news report would equally put across both sides of the debate, finally allowing the viewer to make up their own mind. But sometimes we need to zoom out a little bit to find balance. I'll discuss what I mean shortly. Media bias, on the other hand, describes unfair and unbalanced reporting, which discreetly or very blatantly puts more impetus on only one side of the story, and sometimes even ignores the other side of the story altogether. But there's a problem. As human beings, it's quite impossible to be 100% unbiased, and every reporter will consciously or subconsciously slant their reports based on their own beliefs, experiences, and understanding. Ever since I started my reports on China show, I've had people accuse me of being unbalanced and only talking positively of China. That's actually completely true, and I'll tell you why. Demanding I report the good and the bad from China seems noble at the face of it, but it's actually extremely hypocritical, and also shows a lack of understanding about my role and about fairness and balance in the media in general. Firstly, my show primarily analyzes how foreign media reports on China, which is why it's called Reports on China. Because of that, it's literally not my job to go and seek out scandals and disasters and bad news here in China. Instead, my role is to correct Western media when they get it wrong. Now, if you think of it that way, my show literally brings balance and clarity to what is often dangerously unbalanced coverage. Secondly, demanding I include reports of negative news in China is hypocritical, since the same expectation is not made of Western media when reporting on China. Many, many Western reports are completely and utterly unbalanced and unfair. Leading to an extremely anti-China bias across the vast, vast majority of English media reporting on this massive country. Let's take a quick look at just one recent example. Here is a report by Financial Times about the U.S. leadership debating whether or not China is getting ready to provide weapons to Russia, a very serious topic which could quite literally spark conflict. Inside the article, we hear from three U.S. officials: President Joe Biden, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, and National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby, all without a single quote from the Chinese side. Who the story is explicitly about? Now, why is that? Financial Times could have easily found some Xinhua news articles relating to this topic, or they could have found quotes from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson's daily Beijing press briefings, which are supplied in English, 
Or they could have picked up the phone and called a Chinese expert, such as a university professor. But no, the story surrounding a very, very important topic is completely biased. And that's how it is across the vast majority of Western media reporting on China. Biased and blatantly anti-China. Thirdly, balance doesn't necessarily need to come in each and every single report. Instead, fairness and balance can appear when you zoom out and take a look at the wider picture. As one example, balance might present itself in a series of articles over a period of time. Remember that fictional road the government wanted to build across that farmland? Well, a magazine might choose to write a series of in-depth pieces on all those affected. One week, they may solely interview the family who are losing their farm without offering the other side of the story in that specific piece, which may feel biased to some readers. But the next week, they might add a feature about the benefits the road will bring to the wider community. By zooming out, the reader can start to see balance. And that's where I see my work fitting in. Sure, my series might appear to be biased towards painting China in a more positive light, but if you zoom out and look at the entire media landscape, my reports are merely a drop in the ocean when it comes to attempting to bring some balance back to English language China reporting. So much of the media in the West is biased towards seeing the US-led Anglosphere in general as good and just and righteous, while painting China as dangerous, dirty and dystopian. I'm simply showing people how that isn't necessarily true in an attempt to become a balancing force. Now, China is not perfect. No country is, but it simply isn't my job, and nor am I willing, to be quite frank, to provide even more anti-China reportage. If you want to read China bad stories, you can just turn on any mainstream media in the English-speaking world, and you'll have enough content to last literally a lifetime. Now, I know from living in this country for close to 10 years, from studying here and working here, from making friends here and exploring every corner of this massive country, that China is absolutely not how it is portrayed in the Western media. Like I said, China is not perfect, but that image is absolutely and unequivocally false, which is why I'm devoting my time to trying to show the China I see every day to people around the world. And that is why you won't see me adding China bad stories to my show. Well, that's it for today, you guys. As always, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Please let me know your opinions down below. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.